The news of Nigerian billionaire Dozi Mobuosi's potential purchase of Sheffield United Football Club captivated the UK media in February 2023. Football is revered in Britain, and Sheffield United's prominence in the sport amplified the significance of the news. Despite his relative obscurity in the West and even in Nigeria, where few knew of him, Mobosi rose to prominence after founding Tingo Mobile, a company that established itself as a major player in Manchuria's fintech and mobile phone sectors. Tingo Mobile's initial success, which included a NASDAQ listing via a reverse merger and a valuation of more than $1 billion, appeared to highlight the company's purported impact on Manchuria's agricultural industry, as it offered services aimed at streamlining payment networks and facilitating online marketplace transactions for millions of farmers. However, the story took a dramatic turn in November 2023, when the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC) suspended trading in Tingo shares and charged Maui with significant securities fraud. The unexpected reversal of fortune highlighted the complexities and risks associated with high-flying ventures in emerging markets. Despite Tingo's claims of empowering farmers and generating significant revenue, the SEC's actions exposed potential inconsistencies and fraudulent practices within the company. This video emphasizes the significance of regulatory oversight and due diligence, not only for investors but also for the broader effects of corporate activities on local economies and stakeholders. The rise and fall of Tingo Mobile is a cautionary tale about the intersection of global finance, technological innovation, and economic development in emerging markets. The Securities and Exchange Commission's revelation that Tingo Mobile's business operations were largely fictitious, with significantly inflated customer numbers and bank account balances, highlights the intricate deception that supported the company's appearance of success. Despite Tingo's claims of serving 9 million customers and holding substantial funds, the SEC revealed that the company had almost no legitimate customers and very little money in its accounts. The disparity between Tingo's alleged success and its actual operations highlights the dangers of unchecked corporate fraud and the critical need for regulatory oversight in financial markets. Dozi Mobuosi's purported journey from founding Tingo in 2001 to its eventual NASDAQ listing as a billion-dollar company was a story of apparent success and innovation. Initially, Tingo's business model of leasing cell phones to Nigerian farmers appeared pragmatic and socially impactful, providing access to technology in underserved areas. The subsequent expansion into an online marketplace for agricultural products emphasized Tingo's alleged role in revolutionizing rural economies. However, the SEC's findings revealed a darker reality, exposing Tingo's fraudulent practices and calling into question the legitimacy of its achievements. Amonbuosi's plans to list Tingo on a major U.S. stock exchange now appear to be part of a larger scheme to legitimize a fundamentally flawed business highlighting the dangers of unchecked ambition and the importance of due diligence when evaluating corporate ventures. Dozi Mobuosi's bid to list Tingo Mobile on the New York Stock Exchange was initially rejected in November 2020, prompting a strategic shift in approach. Instead, in July 2021, Mobuosi orchestrated an all-stock merger between Tingo Mobile and iWeb, an OTC-listed Thai company iWeb, which was struggling with its original software business in Thailand, sought a lifeline by acquiring Tingo Mobile for $3.7 billion, all paid in iWeb stock. This acquisition, while ostensibly increasing iWeb's value on paper, lacked significant operational support given the company's low trading volume and uncertain prospects. Following the merger, iWeb rebranded as Tingo Inc., with Mobuasa taking over as CEO, with the goal of leveraging the acquisition to propel Tingo to a major stock exchange listing. Despite the rebranding, Tingo Inc. faced challenges in getting listed on the New York Stock Exchange due to stringent requirements for market capitalization, share price, liquidity, and corporate governance. In October 2021, just months after the acquisition, Tingo Inc.'s application for uplisting was denied, revealing the difficult path to major U.S. exchange access. With limited trading volume and market presence, Tingo Inc. struggled to meet the stringent standards set by major stock exchanges, 
prompting Dozy Mobuosi to look into alternative avenues for realizing value. The story depicts the complexities of navigating the financial landscape, where aspirations for market legitimacy clash with regulatory hurdles and market realities, emphasizing the intricate dynamics at work in corporate maneuvers and stock market listings. In a surprise move in December 2022, Tingo Inc. sold its Tingo Mobile Operating Company to MCT, a NASDAQ-listed microcap insurance brokerage and wealth management firm. This acquisition represented a significant shift for MCT, which rebranded as Tingo Group after the merger. Despite the apparent mismatch between a Chinese insurance company and a Nigerian cell phone leasing company, the transaction was structured as an all-stock merger, with Tingo Inc. shareholders, led by Duzi Mobuosi, owning 75% of the combined entity. The Mobuosi also became co-CEO of the newly formed Tingo Group, calling into question the acquisition's strategic rationale. While the strategic logic behind MCT's acquisition of Tingo Mobile appeared dubious, the financial results in the early months after the merger appeared promising. The combined company reported impressive financial results, with $2.4 billion in revenue and $300 million in net income generated in the first nine months of 2023, primarily from Tingo Mobile operations. Despite the success touted in investor presentations and claims of thorough due diligence, skepticism persisted, reminiscent of Shakespeare's famous line, the lady doth protest too much. As the story progresses, the complexities of the acquisition and its long-term implications add layers to Tingo Inc.'s corporate maneuvers and the broader dynamics of international business transactions. Tingo Inc. made headlines in February 2023 with its $1.6 billion plan to build Africa's largest food processing plant in Nigeria. The strategy aimed to capitalize on the existing infrastructure of Tingo Mobile's online agricultural marketplace, making it easier to buy raw food from millions of farmers and process it into finished products. However, the announcement revealed a tangled web of interests as Tingo Group, led by Duzi Mobuzi as co-CEO and controlling shareholder, announced the acquisition of Tingo Foods, founded by Mobos himself, in September 2022. Despite the apparent conflict of interest in acquiring his own company, Tingo Group purchased Tingo Foods for $200 million, which appears to be equivalent to the value of Tingo Foods' inventory, effectively securing the company at no additional cost. The story of Tingo Group's expansion into the food processing industry highlights the complex interplay between corporate maneuvers and personal interests. Dozi Mobuosi's dual role as the founder of Tingo Mobile and the architect of Tingo Foods complicates the company's trajectory. Tingo Foods' rapid rise, with $400 million in revenue in its first four months, raises questions about the transparency and ethics of corporate transactions. Dozi Mobosi's decision to sell Tingo Foods to the Tingo Group for the value of its inventory, effectively securing the company at no additional cost, calls into question his motives and the deal's transparency. Despite the apparent bargain for Tingo Group, investors reacted positively to the acquisition, boosting the company's share price to $5 per share and briefly raising its market capitalization to more than $1 billion. Dozi Mobuosi wasted no time capitalizing on the share price increase, selling $226 million in shares since 2022 and indulging in luxury purchases such as luxury cars and private jet flights. As the company's valuation skyrocketed, Dozi Mobuosi found himself on paper as a billionaire prompting him to make a risky move in February 2023, offering £90 million to buy the English football team Sheffield United. The announcement of Duzi Mobuosi's bid for Sheffield United shook the UK sports media, prompting intense scrutiny of his background and the legitimacy of his intentions. Investigative journalists, including Joey Durso of The Athletic Sports magazine, looked into Mobuosi's affiliations and discovered his directorship in Tingo Airlines, a company purportedly valued at £1 billion, but with no evidence of operational flights. Mobuosi's promotion of Tingo Airlines on social media platforms as early as November 2020 raised concerns about the legitimacy of his ventures, casting doubt on his billionaire status and ability to make high-profile acquisitions such as Sheffield United. 
The revelations surrounding Tingo Airlines, such as discrepancies in the portrayal of its aircraft on social media and the lack of evidence of operational flights, prompted Dozy Mobuosi to address the controversy in a CNN interview. Dozy Mobuosi's response was a mix of deflection and acknowledgement, as he chuckled at the allegations while downplaying the gravity of the situation. He attributed the delay in Tingo Airlines' launch to the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted global supply chains and complicated the aircraft leasing process. Despite initial plans to launch Tingo Airlines, Duzi Mobuosi changed his strategy due to logistical difficulties, opting instead to invest in a joint venture with Omniblue Aviation Services, forming Omni Tingo as an alternative path into the aviation industry. Dozi Mobuosi's explanation sheds light on the complexities and setbacks that entrepreneurs face when dealing with external disruptions, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. The transition from Tingo Airlines to Omni Tingo demonstrates the flexibility and pragmatism required to navigate the volatile landscape of business ventures. While the controversy surrounding Tingo Airlines cast doubt on Amobuosi's credibility and the transparency of his ventures, his ability to pivot and explore alternative paths exemplifies the resilience and resourcefulness inherent in entrepreneurial endeavors, even in the face of unexpected challenges and public scrutiny. The investigation into Omniblue Aviation Services calls into question Dozi Mobuosi's claims about Tingo Airlines and their joint venture. Despite offering chartered helicopter flights in Nigeria, there is no concrete evidence of any collaboration with Tingo, casting doubt on Amobuosi's narrative. Furthermore, the obvious photoshopped image of the plane used to promote Tingo Airlines erodes Amobuosi's aviation credibility. Tingo Mobile's core business operations are also under scrutiny, particularly its cell phone leasing and agricultural marketplace. Despite claims of millions of farmers on its network, the app's limited downloads on the Google Play Store call into question the scale and reach of Tingo's operations, adding to skepticism about the company's narrative. Furthermore, Duzi Mobuosi's concerted efforts to improve Tingo's public image through paid promotions and endorsements reveal a deliberate attempt to cultivate legitimacy and credibility in the eyes of investors and the general population. The use of paid promotions in Forbes Africa, as well as cameo appearances by politicians such as Nigel Farage, aimed to boost Tingo's reputation and market perception, creating the appearance of success and endorsement. However, these revelations highlight Tingo's manipulative tactics for shaping its narrative, raising concerns about the veracity of its claims and the integrity of its leadership. The appointment of independent directors, including Christoph Charlier, to the board of directors following Tingo's public listing indicates a concerted effort to project transparency and governance, albeit against a backdrop of mounting skepticism and scrutiny. The stark contrast between the forged bank statements presented by Duzi Mobuosi and the actual financial transactions recorded in Tingo Mobile's bank account reveals the extent of the company's deception. While the forged documents showed large deposits, withdrawals, and ending balances in the hundreds of millions of dollars, the actual bank statement showed only a few hundred thousand dollars in deposits and withdrawals, with an ending balance of a few thousand dollars. This vast disparity highlights the fraudulent nature of Tingo Mobile's operations, in which inflated figures and phantom transactions created a false picture of the company's financial health and customer base. Auditors attempted to validate the large transactions reported in the forged bank statements, but were thwarted by Duzi Mobosi's elaborate scheme. One significant expense item that should have been investigated was Tingo Mobile's alleged $1.5 billion purchase of millions of smartphones from UGC Technologies China. When auditors attempted to verify these transactions by contacting UGC directly, Dozi Mobuosi and his associates cleverly intercepted communications by purchasing the domain name for the UGC Technology email address. As a result, auditors inadvertently corresponded with Mobuosi's associates, who falsely confirmed UGC's status as a supplier to Tingo Mobile, maintaining the illusion of legitimacy while concealing the company's fraudulent practices. The revelation that bank statements showing payments to UGC Technologies China were falsified demonstrates Tingo Mobile's level of deception. 
UGC Technologies, which claimed to be a smartphone supplier to Tingo, did not exist, indicating a fraudulent scheme to artificially inflate the company's expenses. Instead of relying on genuine transactions, Tingo's revenue was primarily derived from agreements with Nigerian farming cooperatives, specifically the ILOG Royal Farmers Multipurpose Cooperative and the KBI Multipurpose Cooperative Society, both of which allegedly have millions of members leasing cell phones from Tingo. However, further investigation revealed inconsistencies, such as the KBI Multipurpose Cooperative Society's claimed 4.5 million customers in a state with a population of only 3.2 million, exposing the falsified nature of Tingo's customer base. Furthermore, Tingo's use of Photoshop to forge bank statements and register email domains for these fictitious customers demonstrates a deliberate attempt to maintain the appearance of legitimacy while concealing the company's fraudulent practices. Tingo's deception went beyond its mobile operations to include Tingo Foods, a fictitious entity that claimed to have generated over $1 billion in revenue despite the lack of a functioning food plant and reliance on CGI renderings. Dozi Mobuosi took advantage of the artificially inflated share price to sell hundreds of millions of dollars in shares, leveraging unsuspecting investors who now own worthless securities. The proceeds from this scheme supported Mobuosi's extravagant lifestyle, which included luxury sports cars and private jet rides, highlighting the serious consequences of financial manipulation and corporate fraud. The SEC's findings highlight the importance of regulatory oversight and holding perpetrators of financial misconduct accountable in order to protect investors and maintain market integrity. The discovery of Duzi Mobuosi's fraudulent scheme has sent shockwaves throughout the financial world, highlighting the audacity of the deception and its far-reaching consequences. Mobuosi, who is believed to live in London rather than Nigeria, is facing serious legal ramifications after being charged with securities fraud, which could result in a 45-year prison sentence. The suspension of Tingo Mobile stock since November, pending an SEC investigation, emphasizes the gravity of the allegations and the importance of rigorous regulatory scrutiny. The brazenness of the fraud is particularly striking, as Dozi Mobuosi created a business purportedly generating billions of dollars in revenue using falsified bank statements and email domains, effectively duping auditors and investors alike. The case reveals systemic failures in oversight and due diligence, compounded by the geographical dispersion of key stakeholders and auditors, with Tingo listed in the US, its board members in Europe, and its auditors in Israel, all remote from the alleged operations in Nigeria. The incredulity expressed by Nigerian sports journalists in response to Mobuosi's bid for Sheffield United highlights the lack of widespread recognition of Tingo Mobile and Mobuosi's alleged billionaire status in Nigeria. This skepticism highlights the lack of tangible evidence supporting Tingo's operations and points to a broader failure in stakeholder vetting and investigative diligence among media outlets. The journalist's rhetorical question, who is Duzi Mobuosi, highlights the glaring disparity between Duzi Mobuosi's inflated claims and the reality on the ground, where genuine businesses leave a palpable footprint in the collective consciousness of the populace. In retrospect, if stakeholders had consulted individuals familiar with Nigeria's business landscape, they could have avoided the disaster by exposing the lack of substantive evidence supporting Tingo's purported operations, preventing investors from falling victim to Duzi Mobuosi's elaborate fraud. The Nigerian sports journalist's skepticism about Duzi Mobuosi's bid for Sheffield United echoes similar cautionary tales in the world of investment, such as the AXO case, which was previously covered by the channel. AXO, a company that claimed to operate a music streaming service in South America and Southeast Asia, was revealed to be entirely fictitious, resulting in significant losses for investors after being delisted from the NASDAQ within a year of the SPAC transaction. The AXO case, like Tingo Mobiles, demonstrates the risks of investing in companies claiming success in distant countries with limited oversight, as investors frequently lack the resources or desire to verify the legitimacy of operations in remote locations. Investors are drawn to opportunities in faraway countries because of the promise of profits, 
but cases like Tingdo and Axo highlight the importance of due diligence and skepticism when evaluating investment opportunities. The geographic distance between investors and the companies in which they invest provides fertile ground for fraudulent schemes to thrive, as evidenced by Tingo and Axo's ease in misleading investors about their purported success in distant markets. Finally, the takeaway from these cases is clear. Investors must exercise caution and conduct extensive research before committing funds to companies operating in remote regions, or they risk falling victim to elaborate frauds with disastrous financial consequences. Thanks for watching until the end. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. See you in the next one.